I don't think we understand uh, why these companies do what they do. And I think the first, the first time that we saw, uh, com- or we should look to seeing where companies change was Occupy Wall Street. Those banks were, were being protested and they sat in front of the streets. And most people think, ah, it just died out. No, I believe that there were deals made. Look, leave us alone and we'll help you do X, Y, or Z. Um, there are very few giant corporations, I think, that are true to, you know, uh, even their advertising. You know, I want to teach the world to sing. Do you, Coke? Um, we have Callie Means on uh, the phone with us now. He is the co-founder of TrueMed, and he's a whistleblower on Coca-Cola. Hello, Callie. How are you doing, Glenn? I'm I'm good. I'm good. Um, so, tell me your tell me your story from the beginning before we get into the Coca-Cola. Tell me who you are, where you came from, and and how you got here. Yeah, I was born and raised uh, in the swamp. I was born and raised in Georgetown. Uh, very ideological. Mm-hmm. Uh, worked in politics early in my career. Uh, worked for John McCain. Got into you know most people after the campaigns get into consulting. Uh, then I found myself in the rooms with pharma executives, soda executives, and seeing some very alarming things. So um, slowly, slowly got out of that, got more into entrepreneurship, and um, it just kind of grounded in that public policy standpoint. Had become very passionate. I think, I think you, when you look at what's happening with kids, 25% of young adults having prediabetes, what's happening to the health of Americans? There's something being rigged, and it's a first order issue because you know depression and, and disease is, is just skyrocketing, life expectancy is declining, and and I really tied it back to my early experience and, um, you know, have, have a new company that's trying to change those incentives. But, uh, you know, with the new son and looking at the world he's going into, I uh, felt the need to speak out. Okay, so you were, um, and were you on the side of Coca-Cola at the time when they were talking about, you know, the sugary drinks and uh, and Snap? Yeah, unfortunately, there's not a not a big lobby for, for diabetic children. But, uh, you know, so, so Coke's throwing a lot of money around, uh in D.C. and the consultants are almost, you know, universally on the side of the the soda companies, the American Beverage Associations, the various front groups, and and, and pharma. And so what? So what happened? You were, you were there, and you were fighting for Coca Cola or Big Soda, and you were in the room, and and what did you witness? Yeah, I think I think this is really instructive, and and it's from it's from 2012, and and instructive now because this is up for debate again, but. You know, this was around food stamps. So food stamps is a program that 15 percent of the American people uh, depend on for nutrition. We can debate whether it's a good program or not, but it's there. And uh, shockingly, 10 percent of that is spent on uh, sugary drinks, 10 percent of a hundred and ten billion dollar government nutrition program. It's a material part of Coke and Pepsi's revenue. And logically, people were questioning that and Coke wanted to keep the status quo. So the playbook they used uh, is the playbook, you know, as old as time and absolutely still used today. And it's a th- it's a three part stool. The first was uh, identifying civil rights organizations, in this case, uh, the NAACP. And what was shocking being in the in the room uh, as, as, you know, kind of a kind of a bad scene. I mean, these old, you know, Coke executives basically dictating what the NAACP should say. It's very transactional. They say the quiet part out loud. Um, Coke gave the NAACP millions of dollars, and they explicitly uh, agreed to call opponents, in this case, parents who are concerned their children are, you know, ingesting 100 times more sugar than they did 100 years ago, mm-hmm. racist. Uh, it is that simple. Uh, but it's bipartisan. The second leg of the stool was, you know, we paid off um, pay to play conservative think tanks uh, on the left and the right, but the Heritage Foundation is a big player. You know, the pay-to-play scheme, and it's basically a corporate-owned entity ordering a study from the Heritage Foundations, like going to McDonald's and ordering a Big Mac. You get whatever you want. Um, and then the third, wait, 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 wait. I want to make sure I understand this. <laughs> You're saying that uh, part of of you know big corporations' plans, which I absolutely believe, is to order studies, and oh, yeah. but they they go to the Heritage Foundation. One of them, you say they're on both left and right, but one of them was oh, the yeah, Heritage absolutely. Foundation. Yeah, and I think it's important to call out. I mean, the elites on both sides are getting bought off. And yeah, the, the way it works at the Heritage Foundation is you, you, you get a uh, fundraising point. The fundraising point escorts the Coke executives or the farm executives into the Heritage Foundation to meet with the scholar. You talk high-level concepts, and then the fundraising point 
you know, basically guarantees that a study is going to say what they want it to say. And they, uh, there's an exchange of funds. Uh, interestingly, and I think importantly, I also have seen, you know, oil companies and other, you know, special interests pay the Heritage Foundation and other conservative think tanks to not call something a tax. I mean, you know, Grover Norquist, the Heritage Foundation, this whole D.C. influence, uh, you know, network actually has redefined often what a tax is. So, so you can actually buy publicity to rail against a tax, of course, but you can also pay these organizations to redefine something as not a tax that benefits them. There was something that I saw um, that I talked about in the first hour of today's podcast of of uh, there's this new study out by the, you know, Greening of the World Foundation or whatever it is, a global warming foundation, new study that shows that uh, gas stoves and all natural gas should be taken out of homes because it's too dangerous for kids with asthma. And the first thing I thought was, oh, really? The global warming study came back with that. Exactly. What, a, what a surprise. Um, and everything that we do now in politics is based on some study. And you're saying you can't trust the study from either side. Well, you know, I think I think this very importantly, and, and I think global warming is a great example. When there's trillions of dollars at play, um, you ha- you can guarantee that uh, financial interests are rigging the institutions that trust. And I think I think the third place we went on this on this stop that's that's the playbook is I I think actually the most important, and I think the least understood. Um, large, you know, prominent elite research universities, mm. in my opinion, are nothing more than public relations entities of corporate yes. interests. Um, They're exactly yeah. what Eisenhower warned about in yeah. his farewell address. Exactly. I mean, he said big military industrial corporations and educations will just mm-hmm. start selling out and producing the studies that corporations or the government wants. Yeah, well, there's nothing more prominent or unimpeachable still today in the media on the left and the right as like a peer reviewed study from an elite research institution. But you've got to ask who's funding these studies. You can have a peer reviewed study, say whatever you want. You can ask whatever question you want. You can structure the study however you want. So I think what's really relevant for this issue I really care about, which is the nutrition, the hijacking of, of, of American nutrition, is, you know, the disastrous 1990s food pyramid. Um, that was on foundational research from Harvard University, from the head of nutrition at Harvard University, directly paid for by sugar. You know, it leads up to today to the latest NIH-funded, uh, it's called the Food Compass, the most, they, they herald it as the most uh, most complex and, and important uh, nutrition study, you know, in modern times. It says Fruit Loops are more nutritious than eggs. Um, and it's it directed <laughs> by, uh, by processed food companies. Uh, it says Honey Nut Cheerios is more uh, more nutritious than organic ground beef. So, um, so that, that's still wow. what we're getting. And you look at it, um, Coca-Cola and processed food companies uh, spend 11 times more money on basic nutritional research, funding basic nutritional research in universities than the NIH. And even the NIH is just a grant-making organization. And in the case of this food compass I just mentioned, is actually often, more often than not, funding professors who, who have other financial incentives to the topic they're studying. So, so really, we, we need to absolutely, like, like again, I, I'm looking at, like, PR consultants at Washington, you know, dictate to prominent professors uh, what they should be finding in their research. It's, it's, it's pretty unsettling. So... How do we fix this or what do we trust as a, uh, I mean, personally, I think there is some common sense in some people alive today that would say, you know, let's just, let's, hey, how about, uh, how about moderation in all things Mm -hmm. would be a good place to start. Um, But what do you trust if there's, if all of these institutions are blown? Yeah, so, so I'll talk. I, I think health is, is a specific area that, that I think is impactful to everyone and gives a framework. Um, but let's look at what hap- has happened in health in the past 40 years. I think the patient has been systematically disempowered and in fear, and the, really by extension, the American people, right? It's like, don't, don't self diagnose, qu- don't trust, you know, tr- you, you don't question the science, trust the science. You know, the American patient has been battered into like, not questioning anything and basically in total fear. So, you know, the first step, and, and, and this is why it's important to get this out there, is, is to wake up a little bit, is to ask, look around your children's classroom, look at the fact that most children are obese. You know, as I said, 25% have prediabetes, which used to be called adult onset diabetes. 
you know, look, look at what's happening to the health of the adults and just start questioning things a little bit and question when you see that news article with the new peer reviewed study uh, and question whether it makes sense that Fruit Loops are more, you know, healthier than eggs or, or beef. Um, so so that, that's the first part. Um, and I think that is happening. I mean, I think we've got a lot of people uh, speaking out. I, I'm encouraged that a, a lot of folks, uh, you know, nutrition has been an issue on the left, but I think the right's really waking up, you know, looking at male sperm count plummeting 50 percent in the past 40 years. I mean, that, what do you think very, that's caused by? Any idea? Yeah, I don't think it's very complicated, Glenn. I, I, I think I think, you know, the, the, the foundation of the American diet right now, the foundation is processed grains, which which is basically weaponizing you know whole grains to take the fiber out, which which basically makes it immediate sugar impact in the blood, makes the food addictive. You know, seventy percent of food is processed food, which is the foundation is processed grains. Seed oils, which is a very refined, cheap oil, and added sugar. Seed oils and processed grains didn't exist a hundred years ago. These are new inventions. These are process inventions. And then added sugar really didn't exist until a hundred years ago. Uh, it's gone up a hundred x in a hundred years. Um, so, so really, the foundation of the American diet it, it has been weaponized to be highly addictive, highly inflammatory, um, and uh, and it's just evolutionarily we're not made to do. And we're, and we're being we're being gaslit, right? You know, just 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 yesterday, the American Association of, uh, of Pediatrics, which is a you know wholly owned subsidiary of pharma, but still a trusted institution, said that to combat this obesity that uh, preteens are experiencing, they should get a, a weekly or monthly injection for the rest of their lives, this oh new gosh. big pharma obesity cure. So, so, so it's like, I, I really think that there's this axis uh, where food companies have basically weaponized food. Everyone's you know, getting sick. Everyone's getting overweight. But, but our trusted medical institutions turn a blind eye because there's a trillion dollars spent on stats now, metformin. You know, all these drugs, interestingly, all these things these drugs are treating have gone up. A diabetes has right. gone up, heart disease. So, so there's, this, there's this blind eye from the medical system. So to answer your question, you know, it's education. There's also some public policies. We have some crony capitalist um, uh, systems. I mean, huh. and, this, and this you can take to any interest. <laughs> you think? I don't hang, on, you. hang on just a second. Hold, hold on for just a second. I want to come back. I mean, it is, it is so clear to me, uh, at least. We're talking to Callie Means. Um, he is the co-founder of TrueMed. You can follow him uh, at Cali Means, spelled with a, a C, CaliMeans.com as well. Um, it is so clear to me when you look at us compared to the rest of the world, mm -hmm. something is up with our diet. It is clear. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. even common sense tells you we didn't grow up with peanut allergies. We didn't have gluten-free right. everything. We've done something really bad to our food and our diet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Glenn, and, and to me, you know, I, you know, growing up as a as a conservative, you know, considering considering that my philosophy, I, I think I think it's good people are waking up on this because to me, it's a first order issue. If we care about individual liberty, right, the the most important thing is the is the ability of our uh, brains. And I'm not going to try to get too deep here, but like yeah. like our brain, diabetes is cellular dysfunction. It is literally the cells malfunctioning. 80, 20 percent of the cells are in our brain. Like like we are basically like, like like that is the first order issue of like our human capital. Um, and it's it's not just people being overweight. You know, depression is skyrocketing. Infertility is off the charts. As mm -hmm. I mentioned, the male sperm count, uh, PCOS, the leading cause of female infertility, is is is, uh, is off the charts. Um, we, we really are facing, you know, and getting exponentially sicker, fatter, more depressed and more infertile. And uh, and that's a first order issue. And it's it's and then, and then you get to the market and, and people say, well, we don't want, you know, Coke. It's free choice. People, I'm all for it. I'm libertarian. Like, let's have people drink Coke. It shouldn't be paid for with tens of billions of dollars of a government program. That's not a free market. That's a rigged system. Correct. So right now we have rigged the system and you do not have a free market. You know, and I think conservatives, even even some some very you know well-meaning, smart conservatives that, that that I know, you know, if you even mention taking food uh, coke away from food stamps, it's oh oh that that that's patriarchal. No, no, what's happening right now? The system is rigged right now. The system is rigged to give a 12-year-old an injection of a pharma drug. Uh, instead of talking to them you, um, and working with the parents to, to get them healthier. You are preaching to the choir, especially with ESG and everything else. They are planning on redesigning our food, what food is good for us, what's not, and it is all fixed. I mean, I can't get conservatives um, who are in power uh, to understand, and maybe it's because they're on the take, that 
This is not messing with the free market. ESG is messing with the free market. You've got the government and corporations designing where they want the world to go, and we're not really offered the choice. We're being told lies, fake studies or paid-for studies, uh, and then we're— then we just find ourselves in this situation, and I think it's getting extraordinarily dangerous. Absolutely, um, absolutely, and and you just, you know, you you look at Bill Gates being the largest farm owner you yeah. know, in the country, you know, making processed food. It's just like you kind of start, you know, going through the, and, and it's it's um, you don't want to be too conspiratorial, but you know what is happening to the American people and. You know, and just to your just to your question about what people do, I mean, I think I think hopefully, you know, people are listening to this, and, and it's been a big awakening for me in the past couple of years, and just waking up and starting asking questions. Um, I think there's one actual public policy, you know, thing you got you got to ask with your public policy what what uh, helps people stay healthy, and, and I actually think it's a good policy, the FSA HSA, which is a very underlooked these tax free accounts. What our company's doing is you can actually buy food and exercise tax free. Food and exercise actually often is the best medicine. And most people don't even understand that you can actually literally like qualify food and exercise and other lifestyle as, as medicine, save 30, 40 percent with with your FSA, HSA. Account. Holy so, so I think cow. I, I didn't. Question. I'm not aware of that. I'm out of time. Can I have yeah. you back? I'd like to do a, a podcast with you, Callie, um, because I think this Absolutely. is vital information. Callie, thank you so much for being on the program. Co-founder of TrueMed. Cali means. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to our channel so you'll be sure to see similar videos from Blaze TV with the added bonus of signaling YouTube that your voice and opinion still matters. And if you're looking for more great conservative content, check out one of the two videos suggested here. And let's go, Brandon.